Have Tottenham Hotspur finally got it right under Daniel Levy, Scott Munn, Johan Lang and Fabio Paratici in the transfer market? I know some of you will be thinking, Sonny, what are you talking about? But the signing of Dominic Solanke to Tottenham is one that I think is going to be monumental for this season and seasons to come. Dominic Solanke, uh, mentioned at the top of the show, Bournemouth to Spurs, Pell. <sighs> I think he's a big, a bit of a great signing. I think he's really good. Big season last season. I think he'd do well for Spurs, no? Yeah, the way that Bournemouth played under Areola with front foot closing down, he, he took him a while, didn't it? Areola checked. Bournemouth didn't win for nine games at the beginning of last season. And I think Dominic Slanky went on to a different level. You know, we've been, you know, really wanting a striker to replace Harry Kane in the forward line. And Dominic Solanke is the man to do so. I called this seven months ago. I said he was better than Ivan Tony. And since then, I've been flicking backwards and forwards between Tony and Solanke. But finally, Solanke is the answer. And today, I'm going to be telling you why he is the answer, why he is the perfect striker for Tottenham Hotspur and what this transfer of Dominic Solanke from Bournemouth to Tottenham tells you about the football club. But if you are new to the Sunny Talk Spurs YouTube channel, why don't you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and also become a member in the link in the description down below. So yeah, this transfer has divided opinion um, all around the football in the world. You know, a lot of neutrals I've seen like the idea of Solanke. The fee has a few question marks over it. At the moment, it's between around the 55 million, 65 million mark with Tottenham negotiating hard with Bournemouth over the sale. But... I think in the modern striker market where it is looking a bit scarce, there's not a lot of options, I think this one makes a lot of sense. Tottenham have obviously looked at probably the likes of Ivan Tony and are not sure about the 28-year-old. Maybe his end towards last season after his ban from betting from the FA didn't really give them much of a confidence boost in signing the Brentford striker. Even though he did have a good performance at Euro 2024 in cameos, they might have looked at Victor Gorkarez from Sporting Club de Portugal. But is he really ready to step out to the Premier League after one good season in the Championship for Coventry and then a season at Sporting where he hit good numbers, but maybe not good enough to go to the Premier League. And also... Victor Azimen, a good name, a really good striker over in Napoli in Serie A. But, again, we're not really in the market for maybe a striker like him. Looks like he might be going to Chelsea this summer. But Dominic Solanke, you know, as I say, I did call this transfer about seven months ago. Said my dad, you know, he was really up for this uh transfer as well saw a lot of promise you know an Englishman we really need um, many English players British players for our homegrown quota and I actually don't think the price is all that bad for a player who obviously last season scored 19 goals in 38 appearances his best scoring season in the Premier League similar numbers to the likes of Ollie Watkins and around the same mark as Phil Foden Mohamed Salah and a few more than our own beloved Hyun Min Sun so Dominic Solanke. I know a lot of people, I had a debate in the office, the talk to office where I work full time about this with a fellow colleague who is also a Tottenham Hotspur fan. He was more willing for the Ivan Tony signing, but I gave my arguments to him about why I think Solanke is perfect for Tottenham and I'm going to be doing that today and telling you sort of why I think Tottenham have gone down this route, why it makes more sense for Solanke compared to any other striker as I've mentioned just there and and also, I just think, you know, the way that this transfer is going about, how we've done our transfers recently with the likes of Archie Gray as well, this is a good approach, I believe, from Tottenham. I know a lot of fans are a bit disgruntled about the way that Spurs have been in this transfer window, maybe a bit slower than you know, they would have really liked wanting to get these deals done before pre-season. You know, the Premier League season is literally on the doorstep. Leicester City is beckoning that game on the Monday night football. But I think that this makes perfect sense and going to get into it right now. Dominic Solanke, obviously, as I said, he's around 26 years old, heading into his 27th year, not so far away. So that is quite a big thing as well. You know, Solanke, the age just a little bit younger than the likes of Ivan Tony, and 
maybe that makes a lot more sense when it comes to an asset. You know, Daniel Levy, when he's making these signings, wants a player to be an asset for the club, wants maybe a little bit of sell-on value in the future. And I know that sounds a bit negative, considering that we're literally about to probably make the signing, but you've got to look at these things as assets. The players are assets to the team. Can they be, you know, good for us to years to come? And, you know, Ivan Tony may not have as big a ceiling as Dominic Solanke. A lot of negative energy from Solanke, you know, from his time at Chelsea, from his time at Liverpool. And also that he's only really come to fruition in the last season for Bournemouth. But the way I see it is he wasn't given a chance at Chelsea. Neither was he given a chance at Liverpool. And he's grown into his role at Bournemouth. Iriola has really, you know, brought an attacking philosophy to that club, which is similar to what Ange Postacoglu is bringing to Tottenham Hotspur. And, you know, I looked at a compilation of his goals last season, you know, all 19 of them. And they're pretty much the goals that Ange Postacoglu wants to score. You know, those sort of whizzing balls across the box. And he's, you know, getting the slightest touch on them and putting them home. He's amazing in the air. Amazing with his back to goal. He's a versatile forward who is amazing between the two posts. And another positive thing about him is his availability. He's rarely injured. You know, Richarlison, I believe he had a good goal scoring season last time out in the Premier League. But if you think about it with more competition, you need a striker who's going to be a permanent fixture in that forward line. And I could imagine Solanke would be linking up fantastically with the likes of James Madison, Son, Brennan Johnson and whoever else features in our team. He just is the final piece probably to a Tottenham jigsaw puzzle that has been lacking a striker of dominance since Harry Kane. You know, I do think, as I say, Richarlison, I do rate him, but is he the future of Tottenham Hotspur's front line? No. Is Dominic Solanke? Possibly, but I think he has those more versatile um, assets. You know, he is sort of like Richarlison as well in the way that he likes to press, which is really good. But why not have two class strikers? I say class strikers. Some people might laugh when I say that about Richarlison, but it's good to have options like this in a Premier League squad. You know, the likes of... Arsenal, Chelsea, City, they'll also always have like trying to have two or more players in certain positions. And why not? You know, Tottenham have been linked with wingers, but I've always advocated for an out and out striker. I know I've flip flopped a bit between Solanke and Tony, but I think now Solanke is the right option. It just makes a lot of sense. The sort of, you know, ducks are all lined up in a row. And, you know, our sharpshooter in Ange Postacoglu wants Dominic Solanke. He is a striker who fits his system, the way he's going to link up the play. Obviously, not got the greatest amount of assists for uh, Bournemouth um, in his Premier League career. But I still think he has that sort of asset of being able to link up the play, start the moves, not necessarily get the assists, but ultimately finishing them off. We created so many chances last season. You know, last season was our second highest goal scoring Premier League campaign. And I remember the amount of chances we did have, the high XG numbers, but we didn't always have a potent finisher on the end of them. And now with someone like Dominic Solanke, he will be able to put the ball in the back of the net. A few of his goals last season were reminiscent of Harry Kane being, you know, between those goal posts in the box, poacher-like, and also he can score a good few penalties as well, which is obviously very important in a Premier League campaign. But yeah, I'm really excited about the prospect of this now. I just really hope we can get the deal done super quick. I just want to see him in that Lily White shirt at White Hart Lane, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, whatever we want to call it nowadays, you know, representing this country. And hopefully on the back of that, he can get an England call up and disperse the likes of Ollie Watkins and Ivan Tony and Harry Kane in that team. I'm very excited about this one. I know a lot of the fan base are split on it, but I think, you know, watch this space. Dominic Solanke is going to be a permanent fixture in the Premier League for years to come for Tottenham Hotspur. So yeah, let me know your thoughts about Dominic Solanke in the comments down below. And if you have enjoyed the video, like I said at the top of the video, leave a like on it, subscribe and become a member. Hit the notification bell as well. All the links for my membership will be in the link in the description down below. And until next time where, you know, the season's hotting up, so you might as well subscribe to this channel. I'll see you guys pretty soon. Ciao.